All right, we are on. Um, hello, this is Watercolor Loving. Um, and today, the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, since I have only made one video and it was more than a year ago, is something that I think a lot of people who are starting off with watercolor kind of have a question about. Um, and that is what paints to buy, um, what colors to buy. My recommendation for you is simple, but it's kind of going to be a long explanation. Um, basically, you want to make sure that the paints that you're buying are the paints for what you want to do with your work. Um, if you're interested in painting um, traditional, like, flora, landscape kind of stuff, then you're probably want, going to want to go with a traditional palette, which would be, you know, your warm red, cadmium red, cool red, alizarin, warm yellow, cadmium yellow, cool yellow, lemon yellow, that whole thing. Um, I personally do not subscribe to the school of thought that these are the colors that you need to have in your palette. Granted, I have a lot of colors um, that I've collected over the years now in my collection of watercolor paints and the ones that I thought that I was going to use from the beginning were, well, I should say are not the ones that I am currently using um, and some of them are. Um, a really good uh, book to look into is uh, this book by this lady named Hillary Page. Um, she has a book called Hillary Page's Guide to Watercolor Paints, and it basically runs through um, almost every artist grade manufacturer that you can think of, along with student grade paints. I mean, there's Daniel Smith, Holbein, Winsor Newton, Winsor Newton Cotman, um, Van Gogh, um, everything that you can think of, uh, basically, that you can get if you live near um, a. Uh, a Dick Blake or something similar to that. I mean, we don't have Jerry's Artorama here. I think that's like in the Southwest, but um, like that kind of store. Um, Daniel Smith, I will say the only place you can get Daniel Smith is at Daniel Smith. But Hillary Page's book goes through and lists all the pigments that are in each paint. She lists, um, she lists uh, her light fastness rating for them. There's a swash of each one in there. It's a really good book to check out. She also has a website that has the updates of the um, paints that are no longer in there. Uh, and I will post a link to her website below, but it's a really good book to check out. I personally don't own the book. I've checked it out from uh, the library at the local community college a few times, and I really, really like it a lot. Um, I made lists of things that I want to buy for myself in the future. And I also, this is something I would recommend doing anyways, whether or not you check out her book, um, get yourself like a watercolor book like this. And don't know if you can see this very well. Okay. So start making swatches for yourself of all of your paints. And I list the pigments. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So I list the brand. I list the name of the color. I list the pigment. And then I've listed what she puts down as her, um, like fastness rating for it. Um, so, and even if you don't necessarily agree with what she says about them, um, it's a good way to be able to, you know, when you're sitting there trying to figure out what you want to use for your painting, you can go back and reference it and see, okay, this is what I want. These are the colors that I want to use. Um, that being said, I would really look into Daniel Smith. Um, Daniel Smith's website is awesome. They have a ton of paints, a ton of different colors that a lot of other brands don't have. The value is really good for the money. I think there's um, a discount if you buy in quantity, and they also have Primatech colors. If you've never heard of Primatech colors, the Primatech paints are made from semi-precious stones, like there's serpentine, azurite, hematite, a lot of really neat um, pigments. And the thing that I like about those paints is that uh, the stones, the semi-precious stones, when they're ground up, a lot of the particles are um, shaped differently. So you're going to get a really neat effect with some of them that you're not going to be able to find in any other kind of paint. Um, 
So, and make sure that you, when you do buy your paints, you have a good variety of staining pigments, which would be um, like your quinacridones. Um, a lot of them, the colors that say permanent before it are staining colors. Um, and the staining colors are usually transparent. And that you also have a good variety of um, granulating pigments like cobalts, ultramarines, um, cadmiums, because you're going to be able to mix these paints and make a lot of really neat textures. So also I would recommend buying a book that has a, um, that's, that just shows like color mixes with different watercolor paints. And you can try those out for yourself. The book that I had, or that I have, I should say, um, I think it's watercolor mixes. And I think the woman who wrote the book, her name is Mora, M-O-I-R-A something. Gosh, I don't know. I'll post a link for that book too. Um, but that book was really useful for me. I mean, it still is in deciding, you know, going through, I, I want to make a color, hmm, flipping through the book and then seeing a wash. Um, she shows the colors mixed together, what they look like if you mix them in the palette before you apply them to the paper. And then she shows what they look like with one glazed over the other and then the other one glazed over it. So it's really a uh, good tool to have when planning out your paints. Back to the whole topic of um, having a traditional palette. The thing about that, in my personal opinion, is yes, it can be really useful for color theory, but if you're like me and you are just really interested in being creative and you're really drawn to color, period, um, buy paints that you are interested in when you see them. If you see a color that you like, buy it because you'll use it. Um, it's so much more fun to have a palette full of colors that you are really excited about rather than, you know, um, a bunch of stuff that you're, you kind of feel like you're stuck with, I guess, if that makes any sense. I don't know. That's kind of how I felt. Um, also, don't be afraid to buy gouache. If you want to use gouache in your paintings, there's nothing wrong with that. It's the colors can be really graphic and vibrant, a lot of really neon or radiant colors that you can make. Like this um, that I'm working on right now, I've been making a lot of mandalas with um, flowers and this is all gouache. So you can see the opacity that gouache has and then you can also see the color intensity that you can get with it. So granted, this is not painted on watercolor paper, this is on watercolor canvas um because i'm in the process of moving so i don't really have my watercolor block with me right now but <clears throat> you can see um what that's like as opposed to watercolor uh, you know traditional watercolor so feel free to play around i would really recommend it and also having a book like this like i said it's really useful when you're planning out your paintings even if you have this already made up um Let's say you want to paint, you know, um, uh, let's see. Let's say you want to paint something that you come up with in your head and it's like some imaginary landscape. Take like five or six colors and, um, you know, let's say you have like a, a lizard in crimson, you have a Prussian blue, a sepia, you have a cadmium green, lemon yellow, and then you have... Um, like a Mars black or something. And those are the colors you know you want to use in it. Take those squares, paint them out, mix them together, test all that stuff out before you make your painting. You know, once you have it drawn out, test all that stuff out on a separate piece of paper so you can see what you're going to be getting before you start putting the stuff down on the paper. Uh, because you, you know, I will say one of the things that I like about watercolor is that it's so unpredictable and that you have the freedom to do whatever you want and a lot of the times the mistakes are you know what we call in the watercolor world happy accidents um even though that is true and that's one of the things that i like about watercolor it still is a medium that if you want to pull off something in particular you're going to need to test these things out so um that would be my recommendation for you. Um, 
most of my paints are Holbein. This is Holbein. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so in every watercolor, most watercolor paints are going to have um, a light fastness rating. Let me see if you can see that. It's really bright right here. Okay, there we go. See those three stars? That's the light fastness rating, okay? And then that letter D right there, that's the grade of the paint. So it's gonna go from A, B, C, D, E, F, G with Holbein. Some of the brands will just be like um, one, two, or three. And whichever, what, what the higher the grade is, um, the more expensive the paint's going to be. Um, and that's just because of the pigment in it. And then it should always list on it this doesn't have it on here right here because it's been scratched off i think it's got some like gum arabic on it but it'll say the pigment and it'll list the pigment right there and um if it is a toxic paint like this is cadmium okay this is a let's see if you can see it cadmium lemon yellow okay cadmium is toxic so that means we don't want to eat it obviously if you see that on there this is something that you're going to want to make sure we are not putting our paintbrushes in our mouth. Do not spray apply this product. Contains cadmium, known to cause cancer, etc. Okay, so, but I assume that everyone that is watching these videos is adult enough to understand that sort of thing and the hazards that are involved with using artist grade paints. Um, so, I guess that is going to conclude my video about uh watercolor paints and buying them and what to get and if you guys have any questions about anything um regarding that let me know and i would be happy to answer them so thanks for watching